Welcome back to Boys and Ghouls Film Review, folks. I'm your host, Sarah Stevenson. This is my co-host, Mike Stevenson. Hi, guys. So tonight we are reviewing um, a documentary TV series called Cursed Films, yeah. which was released in 2020 yeah, and ended like in 2022. 22, yes. 22. I mean, 2022. 2022. 22. So it obviously had several... It had two... Uh, had had... Season one and season two. That's why. Yes. Yeah. So it hasn't resumed for another episode, another season yet. But I guess well, there's the, the, it's about every two years. So if yeah. they're going to do another one, 2024 would be the right time. Yeah. Probably. Aside from the the following movies, The Exorcist, The Iron Man, and and The okay. Poltergeist, that considers to be the most their most they consider those are the most cursed of, of films out there. Mm. I don't know, aside from those movies, any other movies that were, you know, Honestly, had a set of problems, it, a set of problems that were on set. I don't believe in cursed films. I believe in carelessness, mm-hmm. people being overworked, mm-hmm. uh, not paying attention to workplace health and safety. Mm. Etc. 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 You know. So yeah. Yeah. See, most of the human error TV series <laughs> yeah. it deals with human error, or the fact that even accidents outside of a film set is not considered a curse. It may be just a, a matter of bad timing. Well, well actually, it, it goes back to back in the olden days when they found Tutankhamun's tomb. Okay. Yes. Uh, like, is it Petri? I can't remember. One of those guys, old uh, archaeologist guys. Harold uh, Carter. How, yeah, so Carter I don't know where and Lord Carnarvon with his financier. Yeah. And there's lots of rumours because people had illnesses and died and different things mm. over a very, very short period of time after opening the tomb. Yeah. Guess what? People die all the time. Yeah. Um, you go into an old tomb, you've got toxic fumes in there, bacteria and stuff, everything else. Yeah, if they didn't take the right sort of precautions, someone's going to snuff it at the site. Some people died uh, of a disease like cancer or leukemia, mm-hmm. or uh, the same sort of thing, but yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, other diseases. Um, it's not a curse. Yeah, yeah, and not to mention yeah. there were moments when they were getting in big trouble with a set of people out there, like, and they either get um, get into big trouble with, with extras or get in big trouble by the government. Like how Hannibal Cog cost, they had, was dragged into court because they were told, they t- told their actors to, to disappear for 12 disappear months. For, yeah. for a year until after the... To make it look to real. To make it look real. Mm, yeah. But unfortunately, the government and the courts didn't really like yeah, this it, approach. Everyone thought it was a snuff film. People were really being killed off, you know, mm-hmm. but no, 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 there wasn't. So You're yeah. going to find that yeah. most of the time, has, this has like nothing cursed. to do with curses. It has more to do with... Um, management. Management. <laughs> Marking and decisions. Decision making and how those decisions so, yeah. will affect your crew and your actors. Yeah, and so, yeah, lots of things, yeah, well, on set problems are all usually hand, uh, problems created by human beings, yeah. uh, dangerous issues by the health, health and safety officer, yeah. that sort of yeah, stuff. And yeah, and like the um, instance <clears throat> that took place with Poltergeist, where Heather and her older sister, who's playing her older sister, they both died at different times. But Heather had a, a, an she, illness. Yeah, which had been misdiagnosed. And the older girl was beaten by a boyfriend, wasn't it? Yeah, That's well, he, he beat her, but no, yeah. she died in the she, hospital. She died from the injuries uh, inflicted by the boyfriend. So, yeah, yeah that's not really yeah. a curse. Which it's is hardly a curse. Bad luck. Yeah, just and have his um, misdiagnosed. That could happen to anyone, to be honest. So, this is not newsworthy or a curse, according okay, to some Okay, do you people. want to tell... What, Go through some of the stuff there, which was actually in it. Yes, my well. Instead of talking around it. Sure. Okay, so, kindly. Luckily enough, this has the same director, same writer, oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. same editor working get, on yeah. this film project. I'm not used to doing documentaries. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Um, produced by a guy called Brian Robertson. Mm-hmm. Um, now, here we go. Uh, interesting here. It's got producer, mm-hmm. and he's also executive producer. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he. He's wearing two hats. Um, now, there's a guy called Jay Cheel, C H E E L. He 
his name's here as the editor, and mm. up the top here in my little list, he's got he does the director, and he also wrote the uh, mm. the script for the uh, mini the well, documentary mm. miniseries thing. Yeah, mm. obviously the questions and stuff and mm. things had to be applied properly to make it interesting and stuff. So, yeah. so yeah. Um, mm. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Mm. Mm. Wish you could just damn cough. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's not much to say about it. It's a documentary for crying out loud. I, mm. I can't say too much. Um, mm. All I can say is that they, they did cover some well-known films. Mm. As Sarah's got to go yeah. through, ooh, go through at the moment. Yeah. The media kind yeah. of dubbed them, you know, curse films because that's what when you have a set of problems happening non-stop, causing um, issues in your production, they call them curses. Yeah. But I've been on film sets, guys, and I've experienced many things. Not, I've one of my makeup ladies broke her leg. I mean, broke when she was playing soccer, and I didn't see that as a curse. It was you just the fact she that luck. it was just it just happened, and she got hurt, and that meant she couldn't come to the film set. Yeah, I've got a bit of a description here uh, off, off the internet. It, it, it describes it as a documentary series focusing. on on alleged curses that afflicted the production of noticeable, noticeable horror and non-horror films. Mm. Each episode focuses <coughs> on a single film mm. and includes interviews with individuals who worked yeah. on the said films. Yeah. The series also <laughs> includes interviews with journalists uh, mm. and film critics who comment on the alleged curses. They also talk to some other weird yeah. type people, witches and... Psychic type people and yeah. other people as well. Like an and, yeah. They even brought in a real. A padding. Um, well, I'm not sure if he's real. Um, an exorcist. And they, yeah, an exorcist, and there's a witch or two. And, yeah. yeah and I wasn't sure 100% if they're real or just people who just paid to well, come in. I don't know. I mean, it's a little hard when you know well, so supposed, little about it. Well, it's supposed to be documentary, not a mockumentary. So mm-hmm. chances are they were. <laughs> alleged um, real ones, mm. um, whether they're really any good, mm. you know, mm. um, I have got no way to check, and I don't want to. Yeah. Anyway, mm. um, I will mention a number of people who did came as regulars in these episodes. We have a Philip um, Nobly, Nobly Jr., who's the editor of Fangoria, the famous magazine that's been around since the seven, the eighties. That has been an ongoing magazine for any thought horror fan out there. When you think about it, yeah. And let me see. The next one, he works in Blumhouse as a um, as one of the. Or people who del- work there. Whatever. April Wolf, a film critic. Um, there's some other people, obviously, but they're just usually um, people who know more about the psych- the more about the world, not just about filmmaking. There are a few people who are like authors who may have came on board just to talk on the subject that they covered in their books and stuff yeah. like that. Stuff like that. Anyway, do you want to talk about the episodes? I'll talk about the episodes. The first one is The Exorcist. Woo. And the only thing, problems with that particular movie was the fact that there were a few health and safety problems on that. Yeah. Like in one scene where, um, where, what's the name who plays um, Reagan? Uh, yeah, that yeah. <laughs> she had developed a bit of a bad aching injury when she was doing. Oh, a yeah, when, when, the, when she was having con, uh, convulsions on the bed, flicking back and so forth, that was done mechanically or off ropes or something rather, and mm-hmm. the crew were doing that to her body, and they got a bit overzealous with the work. Yeah. And they hurt her back. Yeah, so and gotta, when yeah. The, they were doing a, f- a throwing across the room scene with her mum when she was possessed, pretend possessed. She, re- like she, really, got, she really got hurt. She really got hurt. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think um, when they were doing a hospital scene, one of the guys who was wor- who was playing one of the ho- doctors there. When we got the MRI machine, yeah, yeah, yeah. It turned out he had um, he did something that was bad. I think he murdered someone. He was a murderer. Yes, or, he was either uh, murdered somebody before or murdered somebody after it. But yeah. he had, he was eventually went uh, sent to jail. I believe. Yeah, I believe yes yeah. too. Anyway, um, most of the time it's all 
it's know, just, it's uh, but what's what's the word? Uh, oh yeah, and I should mention when there were f- coincidences. Yeah. There was one incident where it had to deal with there was this fire that takes place on the sets of Exorcist, and all the other sets got burnt, but except for Reagan's room. Funny that. Funny that's that. A bit, that's a bit spooky. Okay. It is a bit theory, <laughs> and I don't know if I could put that down as you know. I mean, maybe there's something we can't really identify with in some of these cases. We don't know. We anyway. don't know. Anyway, the next one on my list is The, the Omen. Omen. Now, Ooh. this has a list as long as my arm. Like, Looks in like one scene, yeah. uh, when they're doing the the um, scene with the um, safari scene in the car scene, there was a scene where the... Well, the... Let me see. Um... Behind the scenes, a lion attacked a tendon, you know. Yeah, yeah. One, of the, one of the park attendants got attacked by a lion the, the day they were there. Mm. Um, the car that the main lady was driving actually stalled. Mm. It wasn't her fault, it just stopped, just stopped moving. Mm. And all these what, monkeys, what, monkeys uh, um, baboons so or some other, uh, jumped all over it and was scared, you know, were attacking the car. Yeah. Because it stopped there and they shouldn't have been stopped. And so, yeah. and so they're all over the car and she was... Weeing her pants. And um, yeah. not to mention, uh, I think it was Gregory Peck. Well, two of the crew members, they got into planes at different times yeah. and got struck by lightning. No, wait, 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 wait. Gregory Peck went in, in one plane on one day and his plane, small plane, was struck by lightning. No, it, his plane didn't get struck by lightning. He, he missed the plane and yeah. it still went and crashed somewhere and he kind of missed that plane, saving, kind of... See, Avoiding a terrible death. Can I say what I was going to say? I was going to say the that the person on the documentary said his plane was struck by lightning. Yes, and it didn't fall out of the sky, but the plane he was supposed to be on crashed. Yes, and he was so, not on it. No, you, no one but, thing. but no, he, there was two things: the plane he was supposed to be on crashed. Yes, the one he was on got struck by lightning, and somebody else. No, was, no, that's what it said no, in the documentary. No. Two crew members that were on different planes got struck by lightning at different times, and when Gregory Peck was trying to drive, go on his plane, it got he couldn't go on the plane. He missed the plane, and that plane got into a serious accident, and he missed it. Well, I'll take your word for it. The way I heard it, I was, heard it differently. He on, Two crew members got killed, and he survived for gosh knows reason. We don't know. It, didn't say it that. did say it. I heard them. Twice. I saw this episode twice and I therefore heard that you didn't. It didn't say they died. They yes, said the they planes did. got cra- hit by they lightning. They both died. Planes get hit by lightning all the time. Yes, and they both died. I'll take your word for it. Sheesh. I must have been out of the room at the toilet or something, rather. Yes, he's been doing this like several times. Uh, every time, see, and then we, we'll talk about later anyway, on. Anyway, so I'll find I'm right. Gregory wrong. Peck survived, yeah. and <laughs> other instances did occur, like one bit where they someone got. In um, I think it was even the, one of the directors or the crew members was got nearly came close to getting into a horrible car accident, but like, but, and one of them got his head severely severed, right off. It was really pain, very terrible, and it was very similar to one scene with a, with one of the characters in the movie that got his head lopped off. It was a well, piece of glass, wasn't it? Yeah, yes. and. I guess um, I can't really say if there was if there was any connections or well, it's while these mo- people are act- who are working on uh, the omen and has and not to mention there are a lot of p- older people who worked on it too, but we can't one hundred percent be sure that they may have died f- from could have been died from natural causes. For I know, anyway, most of the time the omen had the most deaf biggest death count from in for crew or people who may have gotten hurt during the production. But aside from that, it's it well. I haven't watched the movie, but because I'm of my you superstition. Should. Anyway, uh-huh. so moving on, Poltergeist. Not so much um, of what I've heard, but I think that it's not a bad movie. But aside from the two, you haven't seen that one either. I have seen the movie. Okay, yeah. I mean, aside from the fact that they said that those they. They brought real skeletons to yeah, the usual skeletons of yeah, yeah. And to the set to for the um, a- unveiling of the dead body seen in the pool, and some people kept saying you used dead you used dead bodies from well, India well, and, skeletons, and, and just you know it's a it's 
it's, it's not right. It's like, you know, desecrating whole, well, you know, a, dead, a graveyard. But I don't know. I mean... Well, they actually made a point there that most of the hospitals and other places used real skeletons mm-hmm. uh, in their laboratories and stuff hanging up below the place where they get it from the same place as the movie mm-hmm. guys did. And the movie guys went to um, mm-hmm. a medical place where they actually supplied the skeletons. Mm. They didn't actually go and dig them up somewhere in some graveyard in the middle of the night. They actually bought them from a place that supplied the hospitals and universities. Mm, maybe. Funny that, eh? Yeah, anyway, it's not... Com- it's not it's th- com- common that film studios would often go ahead and use such skeletons and, and dead bodies in a production. It's it's bef- be- this is long before we start using prosthetics and making them ourselves yeah, and, and stuff. Plasticky ones and, and stuff yeah. or using si- silicone. I've got one sitting in my office here. Mm. Skelly, he's a really yes. good guy. Yeah. Anyway, mm-hmm. the point is that even back then they couldn't bother to actually sculpt a skeleton. You, well, you know, they, could. With the they time. didn't. Have, they didn't have the polymers or whatever. Whatever they made the, yeah. the plastics and stuff. So they used most of the time yeah. they mm. use skeletons from, you know. From those special science labs, or yeah, yeah. or just they, they just some um, supply them for you know schools or other stuff yeah. like that. That's what most people would and have done. And they were all skeletons. Yeah. Anyway, the next one is the crow. Now this and is interesting. Now this. Oh wait, I should get to a poultry guys. As I told you before, two people died in a it. A little girl. A little girl, and her older um, actor sister, yeah. and of course. We had one of the actors who was the dwarf, psych, you know, psychic lady, psychic lady Medium, who yeah. went on an interview and said this was a load of crap, yeah. and the fact that these two people that died had, well, aside from being actors on working on Poltergeist, they were not. This is, has nothing to do with a curse or creepy. Yeah, stuff. the little girl died of misdiagnosed something. She had. Mm. Um, yeah. I think she's misdiagnosed yes. Cronin's disease, but she actually had some yeah. sort of problem in her bowels or intestine. It blowed uh, up. Which uh, created some sort of an abscess or a tumour that mm-hmm. blew up, so she got herself full of toxins and died. Yeah. Of course, the current yeah. director who did The Exorcist Free, he went to the funeral for her death. Yeah. Because he, he got really co- close to yeah, her. He fell off the during, yeah, And yeah, yeah. she even told him in confidence that she hopes one day to become a director. Just like him. Just like him. Oh. But now that ch- that chance of ever happening was taken away. And of course, in her five minutes of. They couldn't. Com- they needed to complete the film, obviously, for Heather, obviously. So they brought an extra to sort of pretend to be her for yeah, the final scene. Yeah, they just see a, a, yeah, a little girl with blonde hair and stuff. Yeah. But they Keeping made, her head away from yeah, the camera. Yeah, made sure she wasn't facing the camera. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. And while the director says in, a, in, a, in the episode, he says, while he feels like this was... He just feels a little guilty about um, going to the hammer by the emperor from the studios telling him, you must complete this film. You just Well, they didn't want to because they really cared for the little girl, which is nice, you know. Yeah. But it, there's a lot of money involved with a film, uh, yeah, especially, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I don't yes. know how much this one costs, yeah. but millions of dollars. And you, can't, yes. you can't say, oh, we'll just flush it down the toilet. No. No, they've got to get the money, so they've got yeah. to finish yeah. the project somehow. Anyway, or other. Yeah. so moving on to the next episode, The Crow. Which is the only ah, the only ah. death in that one was Brandon Lee's, you know, now, death. Now, a lot of conspiracy theories have been centered lots, around lots, that, lots, 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 including the fact a uh, mafia hit, the and fact it had something to do with his father's, you know, yeah, belief system about blah, blah, blah. being um, that every ch- child in the f- male family would get killed and stuff like that. I don't know much about that myth, obviously. I only heard it from the um, the um, ent- the dragon, you know, Bruce Lee story, obviously. And and I don't know if I believe it or disbelieve it, that one, obviously. I don't know. And the fact that it does bring in a bit of Bruce Lee's backstory about how he may have died. I mean, his death oh, was... Oh, no, I think, I think Bruce Lee was actually put out of the way. I'm not real sure, but just get under the crow, okay? Yeah, I don't know if it had anything yeah. to do with a, a mafia no, hit. No, it wasn't. But we, the, 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 what the guys did on the show is showed how... They believe, I think, mm. because there wasn't any total proof. No. But now, here we go. They had a gun, and they showed how, how it could have happened. Now, there's different types of bullets they use. There's a real bullet, obviously. Uh-huh. And there's a called... Um, a 
cold bullet. Uh, there's two other types of cold bullets. One is a dummy bullet, mm-hmm. which looks like a bullet. It's got a, it's, it's got the casing, it's got the shell in it, mm-hmm. but it's not supposed to have a firing cap in it. Mm-hmm. And then you got the blank, which has a a firing cap and a part charge in it and a wad of something rather at the end of it. Okay. Now, what they believe possibly happened is the dummy bullet, which looks like a real bullet, which should have had its firing cap removed, didn't have its firing cap removed at some mm-hmm. stage. And someone used it and went bang. Mm-hmm. And the projectile inside it... Mm-hmm went forward and lodged itself inside the barrel of the gun. Yes. And nobody bothered checking it. And the yeah. next time the gun was used, mm-hmm. they put a dummy round in, which has a half charge in it. Mm-hmm. And being a close-up, well, a few metres away from uh, Brandon Lee, when the blank went off, yes. if it's half charge, was enough to send the projectile that was already lodged in the barrel straight across and hit uh, Brandon in the face. Fight in the face? Yeah, I think he did. He, he it was in right head. Yeah. into the his head or something. His head, yeah. killing and then, and that's him. How he, so it's actually the armourer yeah. didn't check the gear. Yeah, interesting mm. thing, guys. To, if they were didn't avoid it, using a gun, for example... Yeah, they're going to use a knife. They were they going to use a knife where um, the guy was going to throw a fake knife into his chest. And they're going to have a special and vest he, on there to yeah. catch it so it wouldn't course, actually pierce him. when the, the director had a change of heart and said, no, we're going to go with a gun. So, And so if we they ran with the gun, the um, knife, it may have saved Brandon's life. Yeah, he would have been Or at least um, avoided a, the gu- gun barrel, you know, if they bothered to actually check the gun yeah. earlier before they if, checked. If the armor did the have, job properly. Yeah, yeah. of course... And did you say something about the armorer? Kind of, um, he was relieved of his duties because he was not allowed uh, to work on now, the film I think, set. I think is the one <clears throat> they had an armorer working on the set. Yes. And I think for some reason it could have been a union dispute or something, or I can't remember now. Uh, that person could no longer work on the set. Uh, maybe it was the person wasn't a local union mm. member from somewhere else. So they said, okay, you can't work here. And they brought another armourer an armorer in who was part of the local union or yeah. local guild or whatever. And that person was responsible for the, uh, gun. the, uh, the gun and the other weapons or whatever they had mm. during the time Brendan uh, Lee was um, unfortunately killed. Yes. So, yeah, they and that per- they said, oh, overworked. Oh, bull. Armourers... A, a movie like this. If it's a war movie, yeah, lots of stuff, but yeah. you got an, a gun, a knife, a so and so. You're not really that overworked if you're an armourer. Mm-hmm. So, what? You should have time to check your gear. Mm-hmm. And there's no excuse for it. You mm-hmm. don't give mm-hmm. someone something a cold gun and say it's a cold yeah. gun if there's a bloody ball yeah. in it. Mike and I have talked about it on a regular basis about how we never, ex- aside from other productions that deal with weapons and stuff. The only other time I remember such an event like this would have been about the time when Alec Baldwin's yeah, uh, that accident, that yeah, accident let's happened. Move on. And I can't help but no, wonder the, yeah. how they... Same problem. Such a problem armor. existed again. And yeah. we've got to think of a safe alternative yeah, away arm. from, de- you know, a better way to make sure we check the guns before yeah. we use them. But the problem is the armourer is the last person to hold the gun mm-hmm. or have the gun in their control before it's given to an actor. Yes. Technically, mm-hmm. the armourer is at fault. However, the armourer is actually hired by the producer. So the producer yes. is all, also at fault because they've actually hired the person to do the job. Yeah. So mm-hmm. the buck actually mm-hmm. stops at both of them, not one of them. So yeah. uh, until yeah. poor Alec has been dragged into a situation yes. he, he probably never deserved. Yeah. So, yeah. so Lance Anderson, who was working as a sort of makeup, you know, person on set, he was working on it, and he was told by the um, act, the director to use the um, Brandon Lee stunt double to cr- to finish the movie. So they made a... So they made up a face well, to, They use latex stuff, whatever they made, masks out of back in those days. They made mm-hmm. a death mask 
and put it on the actors and it looked pretty good actually. And yeah. most of the time throughout this movie, we don't see a clear shot of Brandon Lee's or the, the, um, yeah. the stunt double's face because most of the time they use a lot of filtered lighting, shadow, and, shadow and, and stuff, stuff. So, which yeah. does explain why so much of this movie is in um, so many noir or newer noir type yeah. of filming when you think but about it. In the beginning of the movie, I think where he was actually, or a parts where he was talking, that was real Brandon Lee, but when mm-hmm. the parts where he wasn't talking and had these darker scenes and whatever, the chances mm-hmm. are the... Uh, the uh, his stand-in, mm-hmm. his, his stunt double or whatever, yeah. was actually doing those scenes yeah. to get the movie done. Yeah. So mm. I believe what just happened in that movie it was not a curse or anything like that, but I actually, or a mafia hit. I think it was just a mistake they that they hired um, a wrong, un- armor. wrong armor for at the t- wrong time. Okay, let's. Oh, we got other ones to go okay, through here. The next one is the Twilight Zone movie, which focuses on the first segment. To uh, that yeah, movie. Yeah, there was... Um, I've got a mental block today. Well, that one deals with a man no, who No, yeah, he's got the actor, I mean. Um, um, oh, crikey. I know. <laughs> i got a mental, mental well, block. Well, uh. you guys know yeah, what, no, the anyway, story, um, obviously. The... Uh, they, the first, I think it was the first part of the story, there was a guy who was a real bigot. He hated, I think he had blacks and Chinese and everything mm-hmm. else. And anyway, if you're a Twilight Zone, he was, he was put into different roles. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, put into the Jews in a concentration camp and he's put into Vietnam when there was war going on. Mm. And yeah, and anyway, and there was a scene there where um, he was with um, some Asian children uh-huh. in a, in a, a set up. A scene of Vietnam, a uh, Vietnam with these buildings on a river, and had mm-hmm. a helicopter coming over the top. Yes, and the helicopter actually crashed on top of them. Yeah, uh, the rotor blades melted from all the heat from the explosions, which mm-hmm. they did a bit too well. Yes, uh, mm-hmm. and supposedly the rotor blades decapitated the actor and a child he was carrying and, and the skid on the bottom of the um, helicopter landed on the other kid. Yeah, killing all three yeah, people. And that was not a curse. No. That was, that was the, s- the uh, director and the um, the special effects person going a bit overboard with their charges and, did, and didn't um, hmm. um, exercise due care. How's that? Yeah, yeah, they didn't think about that, did they? I can't remember the guy's name. I know the guy. Mm. Oh. Anyway. You haven't written it, it down, have you? No, sadly. Uh, I okay. mean, I only focused on the people who were being interviewed mostly. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys. Mm. Anyway, mm. so both the actor and those two children were killed. And while that sprang a whole huge media circus and court circus, like inquiry stuff, where they tried to, you know, try to discriminate the fact that it was just the fact that we're not prepared, something they they didn't predict it when they were working on the film project. And, of course, the director's producer, since this is Stephen King, uh, Stephen Spielberg production, they were kind of let off the hook. And while I think the set designer or set developer at the time, I think, in this production, he was in, being interviewed, said he, while this production was going to make him you know, well-known, it was going to, I think it put a damper on his career a great deal because he would be, him and a lot of the other people would be held accountable for the fact they didn't take into account of of the of the life that they took from this production. So moving on, the, se- the next one is season two. And... This movie, I don't think, deserves to be cursed, to be honest, because I the only thing that was weird about it was... Well, th- the things things that happened to it, yeah, yeah. during it, and, during it. And, and affected people who were in it. So, um, yeah. supposedly, mm-hmm. supposedly, reportedly, yeah. uh, a dwarf uh, hung his life. him or herself uh, on the soundstage, and you can see the shadow yeah. of them... Uh, on the back of the curtain there, yeah, mm-hmm. from the back lights yeah. and stuff. So yeah. that, that movie is called The Wizard of Oz. And actually, be, that, that actually, that piece of footage has been doctored. Yeah, uh, by so fans. So the, the original footage has the, you can see the shadow of somebody, a bo- which looks like a body, yes. hanging in the shadows. Swinging behind, back yeah, behind the curtain. 
and that's been replaced with a large bird like an emu or something rather. Yeah. Um, of course. Um, and Judy Garland, she had, she, she, she was, um, what's the yeah. word, uh, fed drugs and stuff to keep yeah. her young and youthful, full of energy yeah. to be, because she's playing little girl. Of course, this created a drug, a drug addiction a, a drug, problem. A drug addiction. And uh, who's the guy who played the Tin Man, Buddy Epson? Yeah, um, well, yeah, at the time... The, the, the one who's lined up to do the job. Buddy yeah. Epson was a song and dance man. Yeah. And uh, when they put the powdered aluminium and different things on his skin stuff, he had a bad mm. reaction to it. And the dust got down to his lungs and stuff yeah. and different things. And he, he suffered from yeah. bad lungs all his life. And then there's the witch... And you yes. know the bit where she appears out in the powerful smoke, and when she disappears, yeah, through the sound stage, she and the puff of, burns uh, both her fa- a little well, her her hat. Well, the hat caught and fire, the and the broom, broom caught fire, which then burnt the side of her face or something, rather. Yeah, and yeah. the makeup, they, which they have to scrape off using spirits ha, ha, or I think it, I think stuff. it had, a, had a copper base there. Yeah. They had to get the off there quickly. Yeah. So cost, she had burnt skin and they were yeah, trying to get did. the stuff off her. Ugh. And it was the most excruciating pain she'd ever been through. Yeah, mm. and of course when she phoned her nanny or her maidservant to tell her son... She's going to come home that, wrapped up in a new yeah, costume. Yeah, <laughs> telling him that she's being a mummy, like ancient mummy. Mummy was going to be a mummy. Yeah, mm. so she didn't want her son to be, be traumatised yeah. about the fact her son that Mum she damaged. got yeah. um, burnt on set. But here's another thing. Her, the, her stunt double yes. uh, had to take over a role. A They're scene, going to do yes. a, a scene where... Uh, the, the witch was riding her broomstick and there was <laughs> smoke coming out of the back of it. And they said, oh, we're going to do this um, uh, risk green projection job. You're going to be sitting on this broom here and it's going to look like you're flying it. Mm-hmm. And we'll just there's little motors behind you here making all the uh, smoke and everything. Mm. She says, I'm not going to get on that thing and you know, risk getting damaged again. And they got yeah, her stunt they double They even do said it. that they had a fireproof outfit yeah, for her. Yeah, yeah, and she still wasn't going to do it. And her stand-in or double whatever did it, and the motor blew up, and, and she had all this piece of metals uh, launched into her leg, into her leg, and everything else. So, mm. yeah, not real good. But no. that's, to me, it just this uh, was not, carelessness. Yeah, this to yeah. me was the fact it took place back then. They were still experimenting. Yeah, they still on movies. cutting corners. They weren't checking things because yeah. they were. Trying to make it as believable as possible for oh, us at home. Oh, another point too. When, when, yeah, when that uh, flower flower field outside the uh, the la- the city yeah. of Oz or whatever, or mm-hmm. whatever it's called, the Emerald City or whatever, mm. uh, those snowflakes so yeah, were were actually asbestos based. Yes. And the asbestos based thingies can give you asbestosis, which ain't a good thing for your lungs. Yes. So, <laughs> so yeah. the studio heads didn't. But they put, didn't know back in they those days. They didn't know yeah. at the time yeah. this would be a um, naughty thing. A naughty thing. Yeah. And the next thing I should mention would be the fact that, let me see, um, when during one of the scenes where she is. Um, I should mention when Judy Garland was on this production, when they gave her. With each take they did, she kind of did a lot of giggly things. Oh, no, there's one part when the cowardly lion was going, oh, why would you hit me? Yeah, that sort of thing. You know. uh, she kept giggling. Yeah. And so the producer or director had, to take, director. Her, director had to take her around the corner there. And slapped her and he, a great... And he gave her a nice, not, 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 not a mean slap, but slapped her face to get her, to put her... Um, to break her mindset about yeah. being a funny scene and stuff and say, hey, this is costing mm-hmm. us money. You're yeah. an actor. Mm. Don't act and stop wasting our time. Yeah, and that that was enough. That all sl- it wasn't a hard slap. It wasn't a close fist. It wasn't. It a, wasn't a punch. It wasn't in the mean. Face. Way, but they slapped the face to break that mindset. There's nothing wrong with that because she was yeah. costing them a shitload of money. Yeah. Well, mom, well, m- mm. just remember this <clears throat> movie. Took pl- they used film canisters, and it's quite different to the digital, where we can film as much as possible and yeah. be able to replace the cartridge if necessary if we're running low on battery. But, anyway, um, back then <laughs> they had to rely on wet canister film and, and, and web yeah. film. So it was an expensive way to make it was film, expensive. and they also had all the extras and the and the crew and oh, everybody yeah. in the studio yeah. time. There's a lot of money. Yeah. And mm. another bit of the thingy wing they mentioned was the fact that Judy Garland accused the dwarfs no, of being drunks she didn't in, accuse at the she, hotel in a, room. In an interview, yeah. they, someone asked about the dwarfs and she said, oh, they're drunk and they have wild parties and stuff. Her, 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 um, and she was trying to be funny, we believe, yeesh. but it was taken as being serious. Yes, took it so, too yeah. seriously. And every time the, dwar- the ex-dwarfs from... 
Wizard of Oz came to interviews, they are always asked this question. They don't like it. I would not even put it across them that I would not like to ask them that kind of question to make out that they were um, foolish. I think that the wars would have been no different than anybody else. Yes, they would have had a little bit of a. They may have had fun. Here and there, had a bit but of I don't fun, think they were drunks. Party, they didn't um, gamble a bit, you know, just like anybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was no something to no, break nothing out of the ordinary. So, and yeah. And how would Judy Garland know? Was she invited see, to their parties? And, and she wouldn't have been in the same motel with them. Yes. Ah uh-huh. ha. Uh-huh. So anyway, Rosemary's baby would be yeah. nice to talk about okay. now. Okay, <laughs> Rosemary's baby. Not so much information about it, except for the fact it was mostly about a woman who gets pregnant by the um, devil. devil. Blah blah blah. Uh, but aside from that, they always keep um, f- as a bit of a side story. They keep mentioning about another incident that occurred while they were making this movie about um, Ch- Charlie uh, yeah. and his. Girlfriends Charlie killing Charlie Manson killing Sharon Tate and her yeah. friends because her husband was on this movie. Um, mm. Oh, crikey, mental block. Well, <laughs> no, he wasn't work. Well, maybe he was working on it, but well, well, anyway, well, no, the lady, that, her, her friend, her, one like, of yeah, her yeah, friends actor. was yeah, yeah. Um, was best friends with That's right, the yeah. um, actor, and uh, and they. Charles and his group decided we were totally nuts when I think about it. Yeah, that, yeah. They killed them, and that particular place has been um, yeah. a creepy um, environment. According to them, they think that's a, that place has a, a huge history of of deaths over there. Not not deaths like old murders, but just casu- deaths like unexpected deaths. No, no, no. They, they mention a couple of times. There's even a tour that goes down there. Yeah, but there's that Somebody used to live there, but they died in the house. Or well, that mm. person there had died. But the, it wasn't like a ghost tour. It just like saying people mm. died of old age or something. Right? Yeah, yeah, some no. did. It, it, it was just, it's just a fake tour. But what I was going to say is the building that they filmed Rosemary's Baby in. Oh, yes. This is a, an interesting trivia. It's the same building that... John Lennon mm-hmm. was killed in front yeah, of. Yeah, see, a man mm. who listened to one everyone of the, knows about John Lennon yeah, and the guy. Do and not, oh he listened Lord. to. Um, he was listening to the uh, he, one of the songs the Beatles made that um, was um, that was Charlie Manson and a different guy. Well, I just what I was talking about the Beatles. I mean, Charlie Manson was uh, and, and, yes. and Helter Skelter Yardy. Yeah, that was Charlie Manson yeah, bit. But this guy uh, who killed. John Lennon also listened to the song and came up with the conclusion he must kill um, John Lennon, obviously. And it was. And there's more to it. Than there that, is a lot more to it. But he, want, he, he, want, he, he thought he should have been in the Be- the Beatles band and not John Lennon, even though he want, didn't even know the Beatles. Yeah. Because he was actually mm. an American, I believe. Yeah. And uh, he wasn't part of the band when it was formed. Yeah. Format- and I don't know if so, the yeah. actor knew yeah. the. Um, I don't know if this guy who killed John, whether he knew that this particular location was the filming where where it took place during Rosemary's Baby. It was shot said. where, you know, the death scene of it's, one of the actors. Yeah, the death scene, right, actually, it's supposed to just at the front there, and that's the same place John Lennon was uh, killed. killed. Um, don't know. Don't. I don't. I don't think there's a connection because mm. even the deaths with Charles does. I don't. There's even an interview with one of the members who used to hang out with, with Ch- Charlie, Charlie Manson. Yeah. And of course, I don't see a con- complete connection. There wasn't really. There's no connection no. except for the fact that killed an actress who had she a whole life ahead of her and got been, killed. Yeah, well, yeah. Sharon Tate died. Actually, she was married to Roman Polanski. That's the guy I was trying to think of. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, he wasn't actually on the uh, no. Rosemary's Baby, but yeah, he was a well-known yeah. uh, person back in those days. So, yeah. Another yeah. thing about this was William Castle worked on, or he was a producer yeah, working on right. it. Yeah, that's a good idea. And yeah, yeah. he got mm. bad press be- by the media and f- and probably some of the fans who were shocked that he was doing such a. Um, a movie like this, yeah. quite different from his comedy horror. His comedy or horrors and stuff, but he, but he was just a filmmaker. He produced it. what the market wanted. This yeah. the market was turning, so he made a seriously good movie. Yeah, you know, and so. while it may not be my cup of tea, but a lot of other people you would haven't disagree. seen it. Mm-hmm. Well, I heard so much about you it. You haven't seen it, and it has an interesting <laughs> impact. Obviously, I think it was filmed brilliantly, and mm. I think really the atmos comes out of the screen at you. Mm-hmm. And that's 
That's fantastic. William Castle did a great job, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm. so the next one is called The Serpent and the Rainbow. No, The and Stalker. Oh, yeah, The Stalker. My bad. Uh, but that was a, that was a, that was a that Russian movie. We don't know Russian. too much about it, but there were a few things there. Yeah. Um, people mm. got sick and died because they actually fill them in uh, toxic, and toxic waste water. water. Uh, yeah. yeah, from a local now factory there. or something or other, mm -hmm. and they got ill. Yeah, uh, this was back yeah. in the 1970s. And Whatever, yeah. And, of course, um, the director, um, well, it did happen that all these people, some of these people, the crew, and maybe the um, cast, because two of the cast members who were in the water, they died. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, the ones who were on the crew, in the cast and or crew, yeah. who didn't actually go into the water. Like the script director. It didn't die. I mean, the script writer. Yeah, he, script didn't, writer he didn't yeah, go he didn't in the die. water. Yeah, he was standing there, he was watching, he's on, he on the set, but he wasn't actually in the water. But the ones who actually got into the water and had to lay there, for, especially for hours on end, mm -hmm. yeah, doing shot their by shot, shot. Yeah, their scenes, they just... These toxins were just taken in the body, bacteria and mm. guardia, whatever was in the water, and it, 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 it gradually killed them over a very short period of time. Then years later, the director did die. Of course, there is. But he wasn't there, in the water as much. No, he, <laughs> I mean I think that somehow he survived, and um, so. But the date of when he died was written on a sort of a calendar oh, a, in, a, in the a, water. Yeah, in one of the shots there was a calendar page with the date the 25th or something or other on it and he died on the 25th yeah I don't two incidents maybe but mm, mm. i'm still questioning that one <laughs> anyway the next one is called the serpent and, and the rainbow and that one is about voodoo, um, voodoo and, ha and, and stuff like yeah. that mm. and this production um it has not i don't think they did do a special voodoo ceremony thingy to wish them luck on working well, on this production. Well, actually, they, well, actually worked a real one. They, they worked, worked, worked on Haiti, and a lot of the local people were actually in the movie as extras and stuff. And uh -huh. they and they actually we went. The people in the production company were actually mm -hmm. taken to a voodoo ritual, and they were well blessed by the we voodoo think. people mm -hmm. uh, for uh, to help them with the, on their uh, project. Yeah, because at the yeah. time, um, a lot of soldiers and guys around they were you know always in the towns and areas and they were very i would be i would be nervous if they you know came near me and i would have been worried we would have to be told to leave this area because we're told this is i'm um, not you're not you're restricted from this area blah 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 but anyway the movie i should mention it's while it's based off a book I, from what I can grasp from the book, I think the book is just a serious, Actually, true, you know, story yeah. of of how voodoo is done. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't think the movie was much like the book. Yeah, I think yeah. more or less mm. the I think the in the book that does describe um, how it's, they do the special, tr you know, special ritual of bringing a person back to life. And allegedly. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah actually, well, it's not allegedly. Well, yeah, it's, 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 it's where people get it wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. As far as... I've, I've read up on a few things. Okay. From what I understand, there's no such thing as a zombie. Not per se. Yeah. All right. However, mm. uh, there are drugs that mm -hmm. they have used over there uh, mm -hmm. at stages which would put you into a very, very deep coma. Which right. would make, resemble a death. Um, right. So down your body functions so much that you appear to be dead. You know, a rough check by doctors, mm -hmm. not breathing, bung them into the box, and they find out you know, the other person's actually been buried alive. But yeah. you can actually use the same drugs mm. to kill somebody off temporarily, yeah. and then you beat, bung them in the ground and you dig them up. Then you keep them sedated and you keep them as a worker and uh, drug down the skull on something similar to it, mm. uh, and you get yeah. free labour out of so it. So it's not really walking dead yeah. but mm. that's why you say oh my uncle died a couple of the uh, last year and i saw him walking down the street he's a zombie yes well, he's not he's so just drugged out the his point skull, i'm know. trying to make is in <laughs> hollywood um they've always tried to make out zom zombies, zombies uh, are you know creepy and, stuff like that and, and voodoo's and bad and stuff. voodoo's yeah, evil yeah, yeah. Yes, well, it's not really and yeah. the fact with the remains they were trying to make it an honest well, at least the author wanted to the be book, an, yeah. an honest version of voodoo, and not a, a nasty yeah, depiction. But, and that's where the problem but was. But here's the problem with this. 
there's no I don't think the guys the producers they would not put up their money for um just an interesting drama about a good zombie would you say or, or good witch doctor nah. they would probably <laughs> put, put their money up for anything that might have it, be yeah, theatrical or we horror we want blood yeah yeah. this was a Wes Craven one and Wes Craven oh, right. yeah, yeah, was yeah, trying right, to yeah. break away from horror at the time because he was getting a little bit tired of wearing that same hat all the time Mask. but <laughs> anyway so you he wasn't. He kind of enjoyed working on this film project, but when he get close to the big crowd scenes to the very end, there he ended up having very big crowd scenes, like lots and of they people all joined to be paid. in, and we could they couldn't actually tell them go back to where you belong because we can't really afford you. So sorry, we can't. But instead, they tried to told them that we can't afford we can't pay you very much because it will only cost you we we can only could give you like three dollars or a, a, a or day, some, a but day. Uh, considering these people were getting a dollar a day for cane cutting and different yeah, things but they yeah. they had in their mind oh, you guys can afford much more than this yeah. we want more and there's a riot there yeah. and they had to get out of the country as yeah. fast as possible the fact that mm. these people don't know how much prosthetics or makeup or how many other crew members yeah. pay, get paid a week and everything else and stuff like that yeah. most of the time sure the production will cost billions or millions well not billions but and, but usually it comes back usually it's yeah it's it's usually difficult yeah, if you got say quite say 20, 30, it was a, 40 it was people a, involved with the it movie. was a closed yeah, set yeah. where they just hired extras outside the area and they that would be that they would probably know exactly how many extras I'd be needing for this production. But they used some of the locals But they used there, the locals. And, it got, and, it, and, and that they, came and out And more people problems. came along, and more people came along, and got to stage of the, a couple of thousand people there wanted yeah. to be in the movie it and stuff. It was now a control yeah. set at the yeah. time. So, which and has nothing problem. to do with curses, not in my no. opinion. And if it was a bad... Actually, if it was a bad curse, they, would have, they should have died, but didn't yeah. die, did they? No. So. Yes. Anyway, so... Oh, oh, yeah, one of the actors, I think he was a script writer who was trying to rewrite some parts of the script. And I think whatever he was exposed to freaked him out. And I guess kind of... I guess he was kind of so... He was not... He was just feeling a little self-conscious about it. So I don't put that down as... A curse. I put that down as the fact he was just scared, like, scared, mm. like of strange things, stuff like that. Yes. Do anyway, you want to talk so about the next movie? The next one you probably have heard us talk about. We actually previously. reviewed it a couple of weeks ago, or a month ago, or yeah, whatever. Cannibal Holocaust. Ago. Cannibal Holocaust, and you know, and I know what we're going to expect in this movie: gore and gore and more gore. But and yeah. of course, in this one, there is no. Deaths, just um, um, publicity stunts. Yeah, pub- yeah exactly try to right. get it to yeah, be that, that was like the main deaths. part. I mean, yeah, it was gory. They killed animals on screen and yeah. different things. And but so the documentaries of the Great White Hunters and stuff. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but they they were. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd say the biggest thing was the uh, the legal drama at the end of it, where they had to go to court mm. to, to prove that they didn't kill the actors yeah but I think the biggest yeah. issue I mm. didn't think at the time it was brought up in this one where it says it was not it wasn't just about the humans that were supposedly pretend to be dead but it was the fact that they were doing animal cruelty yeah yeah, uh, yeah very much so and that was what dro- you know got, got in a lot of trouble got, got into a lot of trouble mm. and the director was placed in prison for four months but given parole yeah, par. yeah. so he was given a bit of a um, this was a movie that was not necessarily a cursed movie, in my opinion. It was just a most um, publicity stunt that kind of got them into big trouble. Yeah, and some of their techniques, uh, killing the animals and Whereas stuff. It was a bit and, gory mm, and yeah. enough to make your stomach turn. Well, yeah. wasn't, yeah, they, not, 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 I mean, if you, if you shot something, like if you shot a monkey or a pig or something, like, that's fine. Yeah. But they got this live turtle out of the river mm-hmm. they caught it and threw it on its back and then started to cut it up for food mm-hmm. while it was still alive yeah and that's just not on you know yeah. <laughs> no, and according no, no. to um 
one of the actors, he was an English actor. He, I mean, I think the director, the Italian director, he hired people who could speak English because these were supposed to be people who... Well, he wanted to market you know, the movie market to, to the rest England. of the world. I mean, yeah, but he did hire America. an Italian lady to be in it. Yeah, who ha- could speak English, yes. obviously. A little. Anyway, so one of the actors, he didn't like the idea of shooting a pig. And so he, well, he, he gave it. it over to another guy who was brought up in a, a farm, a farm yeah. environment. A so he was used to animals getting killed by their owners. Well, you have to kill them you have for food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, the movie, I think the actors were not too thrilled about the movie and the fact that when this lawsuit came out and stuff, it, well, it gave everyone the impression this movie was a snuff film. Or yeah, they thought. Yeah, they thought people were really dying and stuff. And they yeah. weren't. No, yeah. and it wasn't a real rape scene. It just yeah. looked like a rape and scene. And after you know, the yeah. parole thing, the film was pulled and you know out of cinemas, and it, it was I gone. I don't know if it was pulled out of all the cinemas around mm, the world, just few. in some countries. Some countries like Australia and I think parts of Italy and probably parts of America, America maybe yeah, yeah. didn't like it, so they removed it. But and other places might have had it going, and, and then. Uh, a couple of decades later, it was re-released. Yeah. Because of the uh, things mm. had changed, yeah. Yeah. So that's one movie that's not exactly cursed, but just but um, but did dabble. The poo hit the fan it a lot. Yeah. Got into big trouble mm. over. Yeah. So that's the cursed so, you know, films. It's, 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 it's not a bad series about movies if you're a film buff yeah. and you like that sort of stuff. And as I said yeah. before, most of these things, there, some of the stuff there. It's a logical explanation. Some of the stuff I cannot really pinpoint whether or not that may have been sort of something beyond our understanding, most of the stuff. Like the fact that dealing with the stalker where the guy died at the same time as well, the, that's, da- the that's, date that's on the calendar. Fluke. Or the fact that yeah. those people who died in the o- died in real on behind the scenes were you know very similar to the to some of the scenes in the movie or some of it anyway. Well, I have a question. Um, I mean, most of the time mm, there was no health and safety in these productions. No, there weren't. No, it's just like yeah, it's all insured, experimental, yeah, yeah. and most of them were trying to do something that was never done before. Yeah. Like with the Vars, they were using ma- makeup that they never used before to try you, to you build, do a style of things. Yeah, try to make fool the audience that this is a real guy made of tins. Yeah, I exactly go right. Yeah, um, I was going to say, um, I don't know if it was in the series or something else we saw that some guy. Okay, listening. Oh no, it's from I saw something the other day. Mm-hmm. Now it could have been the stalker because I think the talk. Yeah, that's right. In, when, in the stalker, they were talking about this Holocaust that had happened, mm. uh, and it was a Russian movie, mm-hmm. and a couple yeah. of years later. Something very similar happened. Chernobyl. Remember the the, uh, the nuclear power plant? Oh yeah, right. yeah. And, uh, and that happened only a couple of years after they made this movie, but this movie was focused on a theme and an idea that something of that nature or some something bad was going to happen to the area, mm. and something did actually happen to the area. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. It yeah. is interesting. Uh, anyway, um, I did think maybe there are some su- supernatural things in movies, but one I don't, dirty, great big coincidence. Such <laughs> things like the unexplainable things, like a person maybe get on hurt, you know, the offset. But I don't think that that's a cause for distress. Well, well you look at remember those Tarzan movies. Mm. The old ones with Johnny Weasmiller and the other guys That's who did true. the job. Okay, mm-hmm. well they got the actor, mm-hmm. probably. I'd say they got the actor. Johnny Weasmiller probably did a lot of his own stunts. He might have swung on the vine, then he would have dove, uh, he dove off a tree branch into the water and stuff. He could have had a broken vine. Mm, That's um, true. He could have hit his head on a rock or so, mm. some uh, that whatever a possibility? when he's diving in the water. Yeah. I don't think he's really killing real crocodiles mm. or fighting real lions, but yeah. there's a lot of things in those mm. sort of environments yeah. you could hurt yourself on. Yeah, yeah. that's the interesting mm. thing. There was even a moment when they were describing movies that often have do get into accidents behind the scenes or, you know, on set. And some of those movies would be, you know, in line with the other movies that were we mentioned obviously where they keep saying the omen the 
pol poltergeist and you know exorcist i think most of the time they you, they ca just categorize the movies like think the more the scariest like the ones that connect themselves with the devil and stuff like that and demons and and god they think that there would be we they'd be fight they'd be fighting against nature or fighting against the elements or fighting against something beyond their self control. So they make up these big elaborate things like thinking that the set is bigger th that they're fighting against unknown forces. Exactly. But mm -hmm. when you think about an ordinary movie, like say we're talking about um, Peter Sellers' The Party, they may have had their own set of problems a on set and. And most of them may have been a result of a person getting injured or something like that, and yet they don't pub they don't talk about it as much. I mean, sure, they probably do it in a special magazine and then shrug it off. But the rest of the time, it's all about the supernatural movies like yeah, these on. ones. That they, except for, for the it. Wizard of Oz, I, that's not supernatural. You look the Three Stooges. Mm -hmm. You, have you actually seen the Three Stooges? I know it's a, a bit before your time. Um, not not the remake. I mean the original no, guys. I have never. Okay, all that slapstick comedy they did, uh, hitting each other and poking each other in the eyes and everything. A lot of that was real. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they they got broken noses and broken bones and stuff from all the antics mm -hmm. they were doing. True. And they just rolled with it. Mm -hmm. But no one said, "Oh, we we have got a cursed uh, film." So, uh, mm -hmm film production team here, but no, mm. this brought, they, they, it was the nature of the, uh, the beast. Um, yeah, it that's seems, just the way it was. Yeah, it yeah. seems that some people, for, I think even one interview, in person being interviewed, says that seeing um, years later, people have right go on the news and say, this happened, this happened, this person got into this car accident, and it's a reminder to all of us that accidents do, do happen. happen. Not and where's my check, please? Yeah, <laughs> and not to mention, as I said, you're going to find people in accidents anywhere, all the, all the time. It's not just the unlucky crew member who may have been working on a film set or something like that. Hey, oh, excuse me. Oh, I mean, no one's again. immune, <clears throat> and it's... Well, I do feel it's it's kind of lucky or a blessing in disguise when someone survives an incident like that, and they should be grateful to the fact that they just survived something. Like with Harrison <clears throat> Ford, when he crashed his plane in an incident, he survived. He could have he could have gotten killed, but I'm kind of glad he didn't. Obviously, we like Harrison. He's a nice actor, and and, nice man. And the same, I guess, yeah. with Gregory Peck, who survived. The, who managed to avoid getting you know, into that plane accident, all I know. Anyway, my point is, I'm trying to make, is that in, it's not just in productions that these accidents occur, that outside, normal people get into accidents all the time, obviously. It's it's not a... It's, yeah, it's yeah, unlucky. There's no conspiracy theories, there's no curses, there's no... There's the thing called coincidences and there's a uh, yeah. lack of attention I'm mm. tired no, yeah. no, no, no. there were people <laughs> like um, black mag magicians and witches who came to this and they've even said that there may have been um, may have been a, a little bit of um, like the fact they keep they mentioned in one scene where they said that why would the devil try to sabotage such a production when it's it's pointing it's um, index finger at him yeah, in the say, scene. Hey, yeah, look at me. Uh, hey, hello, yeah. I'm over here. Blah blah blah. I uh, do exist. Yeah, but, yeah. And stuff like that. And I guess um, they even said in one scene that the fact that if we notice the devil, then we know we also no we start noticing that there is also a god Both. and stuff like that. I know it's like it's a little religious, but but it does state but, a fact that where with there might. Be evil in this world, but there's also yeah, a lot of well, good in the world. Exactly. It's probably more good than evil. Hmm. He's got to fight it sometimes. Mm -hmm. mm. Anyway. Anyway, so where do you get that's it? the cursed no. film. So <laughs> where do we find it? Oh, well, we'll grade it first. Grade it. Okay, you, we'll grade it now. Well, you go first. Well, I find it interesting. Most of the stuff that, like the interview stuff, kind of creep me out, especially the ones that connect to Omen or the or the 
or the exorcist and stuff like that. But I keep reminding myself they if they scare me at the, as much as real life, then that means that the, the filmmakers are doing their absolute good, very good, it, an mm. impressive job making me believe. So uh-huh. I'll give them credit for that. So I'm going to admit, so I'll definitely say nine and a half out of ten for me. Mm. There you go. Nine and a half out of ten. Look, it's a documentary. I mean, it's not a thing about acting and stuff. I think it's well, it tells a good story. Um, it doesn't try to force opinions on you. Yeah, and um, they do kind of try to solve a little and, and, bit and of a mystery. Bit, yeah, like, like a bit about uh, Brandon Lee and the gun bit. I mean, they brought some things together yeah. and, they, and, and they, they went through different things. I saying, think mostly they just pretty much bring up yeah. the game of death. And that scene where Brandon gets killed, or uh, Bruce Lee gets killed on a film set, and that's where the people think, "Oh, he must have gotten, he, Brandon must have gotten killed." Similar, similar, yeah, yeah, yeah. But and that's it, where the yeah. whole conspiracy theory spins. Yeah, but see, the media, yeah, and the journalists uh, and whatever, and they, they just, oh, we can make some story out of this and make uh, good money out of it and good reading. But yeah, but they lie a lot, and and, and they keep saying freedom of the press, mm. freedom of speech. How about freedom to tell the bloody truth occasionally? Mm. It would be really nice, you know. Yeah. Um, I get annoyed. Mm. Um, yeah. So yeah, truth in journalism, I don't think it exists. Not in this pe- not and in this that's world. where a lot of problems are, and and that's where these uh, mm. uh, conspiracy theories and other tales start, and yeah. urban really legends start mm. because someone takes that mate takes a takes a story, mm. tells somebody else, and tells somebody else, and tells somebody else, and all of a sudden becomes true. Yeah, I remember some yeah. stories like we've often established in this in some movies, they kind of get some people get it wrong or at least write them incorrectly. Well, yeah. Well, we, we, look, we used to play Chinese Whispers years ago. Ever done that? Nope. Oh. Okay. If my memory serves me correctly, you get a ring of people. So let's, let's say ten people. Oh. And what happens is the first person whispers a line of text or uh, about an occurrence. You know, uh-huh. not, too, not, too, not too long to say, do you know so-and-so, blah, 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 blah. Like, 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 like gossip. Mm-hmm. And that person, you whisper at that person's ear, and the next person passes the gossip on to the next person. But the whispering, mm-hmm. and by the, cu- by the time it comes around to the person who started it, the story's changed. Yes. That, it may be changed a little. Yeah, I may not have to play the game, but I do yeah. know but, what you're talking but about. But the more people that talk, you, t- you talk to about it, things get missed, things get added, things get misinterpreted. And by the time it goes through several people, mm. all of a sudden the story's changing. So, yeah. you know, and that's where the problem is. Gossip, yeah. naughty, man. They also gave us a few scientific, ex, you know, ex, you know, examples of, of noticing the, you know, the unmentionable in a in a scene. Like, like they showed us um, a scene where it deals with um, some basketball players, you know, dressed in black and white. Observation, and yes. It allows us to. They said count the times the white players no, no, who no, were playing the no, ball. I'll, I'll set the and scene count up. the um, yeah, times yeah. They, they bounced the ball. They had th- five, and so six basketball players in a, in a little group bouncing, uh, passing balls and bouncing balls on the, uh, mm. to each other. Right. Um, I think the white guys have had their ball, and the guys in the black gear had their ball. Right. And they said, now we want you to look really, really, really closely at this and count the number of times that the guys of the white jersey, your white Orange. singlet's on, mm. pass the ball to each other. Mm-hmm. Okay? And you're going, everyone's watching that. And while you're doing that, somebody in a gorilla suit walks through the middle of the scene. Mm. And most people don't see the gorilla because they're more intent watching the three guys in the white gear passing the ball and counting it. So that's how magicians do the job. They make you look at that thing. You look at my right hand, don't look at my left hand, and, and that's how they do magic. Mm. That it's all it's all illusion. And that's mm. the same sort of thing. That you make you get you to focus on something. Uh, 
so you can do something else. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. Why? <laughs> it just seems interesting. Like, yeah, but yeah, it was good. You know, it was interesting. Yeah. So, 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 yeah. Well, some people keep saying, "Oh, this is how this thing is done." Blah yeah. blah blah. Well, it's not really. So yeah. <laughs> and stuff what, like what, that. What you what is seen is not necessarily real. Also, yeah. when you think about other horror movies, not just these ones, they never get. Um, things like conspiracy theories. I didn't spam. hear anything about the creature from Black Lagoon. Or, ha- or, or Halloween. Or, or Fire the Mantis. 13th. Or, oh, even, <laughs> <wrong> um, <laughs> or even Wes Craven's uh, Night of, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. We don't yeah. hear don't any hear any, stories. Yeah, don't um, hear stories at all. Something went really bad then. Someone had a bad dream on Nightmare on Elm Street. Well, gee, well, I guess, you know. Yeah. Um, the only did, <laughs> other time I did hear of such a story would have been um, in the Wraith, where um, a car... Um, stunt coordinator got killed, yeah, and they well that, dedicate the movie. And that's to the nature him. of the business. And that was the nature stunt of the driver. Beast. Yeah, the ca- he flipped the car or did something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he died, obviously. Duh. So nature of the business. So anyway, and can that we, was never listed in this movie. Can we or, move I mean, on unless, to the end, and of that's this. probably one of the reasons why they can't think of any other. Oh, well, they, they're trying to look, episodes keep, trying to keep it interesting because yeah. I don't too many th- don't think there's too many movies that d- deal with unexplained accidents or unexplained deaths, unexplained no. um, events like, oh, a prop went horribly wrong, like in one scene in the Poltergeist, a clown's, um, you know, wraps its head, a mechanical, it's, a, a a clown, mechanical clown misfunctioned and ki- tried to kill or hurt, well, strangle a little it boy. It had his arm or leg around the boy's neck and it got too tight and it wouldn't, he, he couldn't get out of it. Hmm. it. That may have malfunctioned. The, the kid might have panicked. I was not on yeah, set. Yeah, I wasn't on set either. So, <laughs> so um, who knows? Who knows? Anyway, anyway, let's roll on to where you can get it. Yes. eBay, it's for sale if you want to buy season one or season two or both. Uh, Amazon has it for rent or for sale. Mm. So it's probably probably on YouTube. I haven't had a look. So mm. uh, either way, if you want to have a look, it's good. It's, look, it's it's not a movie. It's a documentary. If you like yeah. docos about movies and stuff, yeah, go yeah. for it. It's, it's, it's a good watch. It's interesting. Brings up some stuff, a bit of food for thought. I would br- yeah. do... Um, the the seek for, of the dark side or the or the, um, or the so, you know one obviously the documentary one that deals with a lot of famous people being interviewed but that documentary is like three hours long yeah and I right. don't think yeah. I can let Mike here sit through that long <laughs> and the podcast be three hours long too given the chance of her yeah. <laughs> well I just meant like um, I think it was called the search of the of in, I mean darkness searching oh I don't know yeah, what whatever. it's called I, okay. I think. I ho- I've mentioned it anyway, in the past. Can we anyway, go home now? I would probably stick to smaller documentaries, not too big ones. I mean, speaking of documentaries, guys, I was watching one that dealt with the late Roger Corman, obviously, the other day, yeah, not too long poor ago. Roger. Because yeah. I thought I might watch it to to revisit his late his la- his achievements from years yeah, ago. A, yeah. I go mad. He's a marvelous, guy, He's a yeah. marvelous man. Anyway, anyway. so um, that's. The cursed films. Now it's up to you guys to actually go and sit for it and watch it, obviously. And if you do not want to watch the the truly intense ones like the Yeoman, you can move I'll on watch to all something. Of them. You know, our people out there are made of sterner stuff than that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I often think the Omen one is a little on the creepy side. I mean. Well, Rosemary Baby ain't a cakewalk either. You know? mm-hmm. Anyway. <laughs> you got to watch it one night. We'll do. Uh, well, we'll see. Anyway, so that's about it from us guys. So this is Sarah Stevenson. And Michael. Saying, see you guys around on Boys and Ghouls Film Review. Bye for now and have a good week. Bye, guys.